So have you seen those titanium French press on either Amazon or AliExpress, the little ones that look like a little pot that have the plunger in it? Well, I know I have, and I wondered, should I buy one of those for myself? So when Best Hair Go reached out to me and offered to send me theirs, I agreed. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this, keep watching. All right, so as I mentioned, Best Hergo, or Best Hergo, or however it's pronounced, I'm going to say Best Hergo. It's a French press. That sounds like a French way of pronouncing it. If anybody wants to correct me, please feel free to do so. So when they reached out and offered to send this to me, I looked at it, and I'll be honest, I, I often thought that these were a bit gimmicky. Now, don't get me wrong, a French press is a great way of making coffee, and I do love my coffee, and I have French presses that I can take with me in the woods, but to get the little titanium pot version, I wasn't sure that it was a great idea, but it was worth taking a look at, right? So I accept it. All right, so I have the pot here, and I've used it a number of times, and we're going to use it to make coffee today, but before we do, I just want to go over a few statistics and a few thoughts. Now, I'm going to wrap up towards the end with a few more thoughts on this, including a few ways you can enhance uh, the performance of this pot, if you want to put it that way. So let's take a look at the pot. So it is a 750 milliliter titanium pot, it is virtually identical to ones that you can get from Lixada or Tomshu or Tokes with a few alterations. And I have the Lixada Tomshu one, so I did compare them to see how close together they were. They both have markings on the side that indicate volume levels, which is really quite handy, and we'll explain why in a minute. They both have butterfly handles on one side of it as well. And they both have a fold-over bale, nice little bale on top. What the Best Hair Go has that the others don't is a small spout right here pressed into it. So that makes it easier for pouring your coffee into your cup after you make it. The other thing that, of course, the other ones don't have is the press portion of the, of the pot. So how does the press portion work? Well, what they've done is where on the other pots, you have that little triangular pot lifter lid, lid, hold on, whatever you want to call it. They've drilled a hole through so that they can put the French press through on the bottom. All right, let me give you the weights for the Best Hair Go French press with the, the press portion in because I think that's significant. So with the press, the whole unit comes in at 7.5 ounces or 231 grams. Now, when you take the press out of the pot, the pot itself comes in at 4.6 ounces or 128 grams. And that's very comparable to the uh, Lixada or Tom Shoe pot or even the Tokes pot of the same size. What that tells me is that the press is almost half the weight of this unit. And there's a reason for that. It's stainless steel. The press portion is not titanium. So it's adding a significant amount of weight to this pot for travel purposes. Is that a con? Possibly, but it would have been nice to see a titanium press portion to keep the whole weight down, but we're going to talk more about the press in a moment. Okay, so this works like any other French press does. You're going to grind your coffee, you're going to bring your water to a boil, you're going to put, take it off of the heat, put the coffee in, give it a stir, let it set four to five minutes, and then slowly push the plunger down. And we're going to do that in a second because this is how I'm making my coffee this afternoon. But I wanted to just mention a few things about it uh, before we do. To start with, one of the things I was wondering is, is it worth carrying a dedicated French press along with you, in addition to any other pot that you might have, in order to bring water to a boil for whatever, whether it be a, a cup of tea or cooking a meal or whatever? Or is there a way of getting double use out of this French press? Now, my thoughts are, if I can't make this a dual use item, then I don't think a dedicated titanium French press is worth the investment. So what does that mean? Well, it means I need to be able to take the press portion out of this and somehow replace the cap on top or a way of lifting it on top so that I can use it just like a regular pot. Well, the good news is, and let me take this apart to show you, you can do that because the press portion is screwed on in two places at the plunger top. And I'll take that off. Oop, dropped it. 
pick it up. Oh, by the way, that's a heavy piece of stainless steel and that's significant and I'll tell you why. And take the lid off now, set the lid aside because the rest of this is just a standard press, short on the shaft compared to a lot of them. But if you were to go into uh, just about any store and buy a very, very simple French press off of the shelf for a low price, I've, I've seen them uh, retail for as low as nine, ten dollars This is what you're going to get, but it's going to have a longer shaft on it. Otherwise, it's going to be identical, identical in size in every way. So, uh, I'll, and again, <laughs> I keep saying this, I know, but there's a reason why I'm telling you this, and I'll get to that in a moment. So, we've taken this off. I guess the question is, was there a way of putting the knob back on the top of the pot? Well, yeah, there is. Um, just a short number 10, 32 turn uh, screw or bolt, little stove bolt, will hold this on. But I'm not going to do that. I tried it. It will work. Problem is, this gets hot, amazingly hot on top of the lid. So I said, you know, that, that you know, okay, if you've got a glove on, but uh, maybe there's something else I could use that would not only uh, replace this in terms of the not being so hot, but also reduce the weight. Well, let me show you what I came up with. So I came up with two things, and I'm going to install one on the lid to show you how it works. Actually, I'll install them both. Number one, I just went out to my local hardware store, and I went into the hardware section, and I picked up a pair of little hardwood knobs that you might use for drawers in your kitchen or anywhere else. Now, these are meant for a wood screw to hold them on, but what I did is I drilled out very easily. I'll bring this up for a close-up, I guess. I drilled out and put a number 10 bolt, or nut, sorry, in there and just glued it in. And, uh, uh, you know, it stays in place very well. And now, instead of the stainless steel one, the wood one will go on in its place. Now, I've significantly reduce the weight by doing that, but that's not the only benefit for doing that. Now I have something that if I want to attach it directly to the pot, which I'll show you in a second, then I can do that as well. So I probably, after this video, will not be putting the metal one back on because I, I just find, one, it's too heavy, and two, uh, this is a lot cooler on the fingers. So let me attach this to the lid to show you how you can make this a multi-use item. So uh, with that, I will need the little nuts that I have for it. Now, so I um, ended up with the ideal fit. Now, it depends on how deep you want to drill out the knob, and I could have drilled it just a tiny bit, but I'm using a quarter inch number 10 nut on or bolt on the bottom to slide into the nut. That's all you really need. I will admit that this is a bit of an issue in the, in the fact that you could lose it. But there's another hack that I'll share with you in a second that, that fixes that. And I added a small split ring, or split ring washer on it. So there it is. There's the number 10 nut with the split ring washer holding the wooden lid on top. And now I've got a multi-use pot, which isn't just a French press. It's also a pot with a lid that I can get on and off without burning my fingers. So that was one hack that you can use. Yes, we're still going to make coffee. Don't worry, we're going to make coffee. I'm going to put take this off because I have an even simpler hack, something that is very replaceable, very easy to do. A little fiddly when you first try it, but when you get a little bit practice with it, um, it'll work out well. Put that away. Make sure I don't lose that little bolt. All right, so this is even easier and lighter for that fact piece of paracord. So I gutted out a piece of paracord, I'm going to say about four inches, made a, a small inch and a quarter long loop on it with an overhand knot on the bottom. And what I can do with this is I can, well, it takes a little bit of fiddling when you first do it. All right, sorry about that. I cut away just for a second only because uh, it was uh, struggling with no fingernails to get this to work. So all I did is took the paracord and pushed it through the lid. There's the knot on the bottom. And now I have a little a way of lifting the lid off, which is ultra lightweight and very replaceable in that if I lose this, then uh, I likely have paracord in my bag somewhere that I can replace it with. And it makes it easy for getting the lid on and off. All 
All right, there's my pot with the lid on and the little piece of paracord. I think I'll leave that on for a few moments time for the next demonstration. So what I've done by doing this is made this a dual use item. So not only is it a French press, but now it is a pot like any other pot that I can hang over a fire or put over an alcohol stove or anything else. Here's a downside to a titanium French press, especially if it's cold out and you put your water in and you're leaving it set for five minutes, four minutes, five minutes for the coffee to brew, you're gonna lose a lot of heat out through that titanium uh, canister. So it'd be nice if there was some way of retaining the heat. Well, I went to my collection of things that I have from other projects and lo and behold, I had a Reflectix little holder I made for another little pot and this will sit down inside perfectly. So what I can do now is once the, the water's come to a boil and I've put my coffee inside, stirred it around, uh, I can just sit it down inside of this cozy and let it set and I don't have to worry about losing so much heat out the side of the pot. All right, so that's a couple of hacks that I've shown you on how you can improve and make this into a dual purpose item. But its primary purpose, of course, is making coffee. So let's make some coffee. All right, my water has come to a boil. Let's get that off of the burner. I'm using uh, my Bushcraft Essentials Ultralight stove with the Trangia burner today. I should be able to take that off without a glove so I can snuff the burner out. All right, I think I'll put a glove on just to move the stove out of the way. There's really no rush once you get to the water to a boil because you want to give it a second in any case to uh, cool off before you put your water in. You don't want it at a full rolling boil. It can give the coffee an off flavor. And you know, just holding on to this, that's, that got warm. Okay, so I used about 300 milliliters of water because I didn't need a, a full pot of coffee. So to that, I'm going to put in three tablespoons or three scoops of my favorite coffee, the Rampage coffee, of course, and I have it coarsely ground. All right, three scoops to 300 mils. That's a boat right it might be a little on the strong side I don't think so though give that a quick stir spoon aside now I'm going to put the lid back on but the plunger needs to remain up of course put my bales to the side and I'm going to put this in my cozy and let it sit for a few minutes. All right, that's all I need to do for four or five minutes and then I'll plunge it and pour some coffee and we'll wrap up with a few closing thoughts. All right, about, uh, I don't know, four or five minutes later, all I need to do now is just plunge the coffee down to the bottom, nice and slow. I can hold on to the cozy on the side Pour my coffee. Still hot, so it's going to take a second to cool off enough to drink, but by that time I'll have the camera repositioned so we can wrap the video up. Hmm. Still a little bit warm, but a uh, good cup of coffee, of course. I put that down so I don't lose any of it. All right, a few more comments on the Best Targo uh, Titanium French Press. So I guess the ultimate question is, would I have bought one of these with my own money? If it hadn't been sent to me by Best Cargo, would I have bought one? Knowing what I know now, uh, maybe. It's a, it's a qualified maybe for a couple of reasons. If I could not have converted it into a dual-use pot, something that I could remove the press por portion from and use it as a regular pot, then probably not. Because a dedicated French press doesn't matter what how good a quality is, but one like this for that 
that much money. I'm now, these are not overly expensive, but you can get cheaper French press options that are still very lightweight. I'll mention one that I own, and that is from GSI. It is a lightweight plastic, comes with an insulated sleeve. Uh, you can get it with the infinity mug that goes with it and the plunger. It works perfectly as a French press. It is light and it is less expensive than this, but it is a dedicated French press. That's all you can do with it. Now, you can use the mug for anything, of course, but you, you can't boil water in it. The nice thing about something like this is you can boil your water in it and use it as a French press coffee maker. And now I know for sure that I can take the plunger portion off and use it like a regular pot. So make it, now that I know it is a dual use item, it makes it much more reasonable to purchase. If it had not been a dual use item, likely I would not have wanted to own this. Now, I don't think I showed you, but this is the little nylon stuff sack. It's, it's pretty much identical to all the other titanium 750 mil pots of, in this genre. So there's nothing special about it. Ah, okay. Now, just before coming out to film this video, I did see an ad for the Best Hair Go uh, titanium French press, and they have their own little cozy for it. I didn't know that when they sent it to me. They didn't send it to me. They didn't even offer it to me. But if you are going to buy one and you don't want to go through the process of making your own or the Reflectix or some other material, it doesn't have to be Reflectix, then you may want to actually, I'd recommend you do buy the Cozy to go with it because with a titanium pot, you're going to lose heat very, very quickly. Now, that's a benefit when it cools off, but uh, you know, while it's, it's trying to keep your coffee warm, it will start to lose heat a little bit too fast. Um, what can I say about it? It works. It makes coffee. It works the, uh, the same as any other French press. If you like to use a French press at home and you want to use it in the woods, then this will work as a French press. And if you replace the lid on the, the shaft of it, then uh, you have got a dual use pot. If there is one con about it, the way it came from the factory, and it would be that the press portion is made of stainless steel. Half the weight of this entire unit, and I know I mentioned this, but half the weight of this entire unit comes from the press portion. So if it was made of titanium, it would be a much more interesting prospect because the whole thing would be reduced again significantly in weight. Well, about 40% less as far as the shaft goes. Okay, what can I say about it in closing? Um, I just want to give you something to think about in case you already own a titanium pot from Tom Shoe or Luxata or Tokes, and that is if you were to go out and purchase a French press, maybe at a thrift store, and you were to cut down the shaft of the press itself, then you could take that and use it with your existing pot, and you would not have to buy one of these uh, pre-made or fabricated French presses. Now, I only say that as an option, but if you don't have one of those little titanium pots already, and you're looking for something to make coffee with and to boil water for other purposes, then yes, this would be one that you might want to consider. Okay, that's all I have to say about the Best Go Titanium French Press. If you have any comments or any questions, please put them in the comments section below. I will be putting the information where this can be purchased in the video description below as well. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.